Hey, Michael, this is Noah Guthrie. Um, hopefully you remember me from last year. We were going to do some shows together and the pandemic happened. Um, I'm calling because my guitar player, Rhett, uh, just took a spill on his bike um, and has broken his collarbone. Uh, and we actually have a gig coming up on June 23rd up in Wisconsin. We had to put the boat or the um, the stands. Yeah, like we yeah. had to like lean the seat forward and put it in, and then lean the seat well, back. Well, you saw what me and Ian did last time we. Were oh yeah, standing. that thing was like the mighty, mighty Prius. unreal. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely Always took down. a couple times to figure out the yeah. right way. <laughs> I'm sure it did. Like of putting stuff in, taking yeah. it out, trying another way. Yeah. Cool. Um, plan is Ian will be here soon. He had to finish up something at his house. Um, Everything's already ready to go in there, so once y'all are loaded in, we can just kind of okay. plug cool. it in and play. Sweet. So we just got done running over the set. We kind of worked out some transitions and then ran the set from top to bottom without stopping just to make sure there weren't any kinks. Everything's feeling really good and we're gonna load up everything in the trailer here in a few minutes and get down the road a few hours before finding a hotel tonight. It's a long ways to Wisconsin from here, so we're gonna kind of break it up over a couple of days. But before uh, that, I wanted to address something you guys asked about on the community page on YouTube, just about how I approach covering parts, how I approach filling in for someone. Uh, hopefully you guys can hear me, it's a little noisy out here with the wind and everything. But, um, you know, for the most part, it depends on the situation. I'm generally trying to cover parts as close to the record as possible. In this case, I actually got rehearsal tracks from Noah, so I had exactly what Rhett plays live. And so for the most part, I'm trying to cover that as close as I can, um, as close you know, as makes sense for what I do. And, and that way, all the guys feel comfortable. They're hearing what they're used to hearing, and, and everybody uh, can have a good set. Now, you know, there are some solos maybe where it feels appropriate for me to do my own thing. I don't necessarily have to match what um, was played previously exact, but there are some solos that definitely feel like parts. They feel like situations where there are exact things, you know, that are a part of the solo, certain parts and licks that, that kind of make up certain melodies and phrases. And so for those, I'm trying to cover those as, as much as possible. Um, Figuring all of that out, it takes time and experience, you know. I've, I've filled in for a lot of people over the years and played with different artists and, and had to cover, you know, what's on the record. And, and sometimes that works and sometimes there are a lot of different parts and you kind of have to pick and choose what might work best in a live situation. It's a lot of trial and error. It's a lot of experience. Um, and that's not to say that I always get it right. Um, that's something I'm constantly working on, trying to figure out um, what's going to feel best, for the band, um, you know, for for whatever band I'm playing with, you know, it's it's all um, all part of it. So um, that's kind of my approach, how I like to think about things, um, you know, especially with a lot of records having lots of guitar parts and lots of layered guitar parts. There's not always enough guitar players to cover everything. So um, you know, just experience. You pick and choose and and find what works. just not sure that the pack could get any more perfect than this. Yeah, it's really nice. It's like everything has its place. Good morning. morning. Seems like everything's still there. That's great. <laughs> Always a sigh of relief. In the house, in the room. In the whole town. Oh, you talking about Kansas? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I would have taken a shower today, uh, or last night, but there was a band-aid in the drain. 
and my thinking was like, well, if there's a Band-Aid in the drain, it's probably not going to drain at all. Therefore, uh, I'm just going to have it floating around my feet. And now you smell like a cigarette. Now I smell like a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> Was there blood stains on the Band-Aid? Because that means... Uh, but, <laughs> no. I had two handprints on our uh, bath mat. Nice. <laughs> Like just two big old stained handprints right in the middle of it. Don't, don't worry about that. I know they really are. Yeah, I I had to turn it over. I couldn't look at those. I had to look at the other like there's, unintelligible stain on like, the other side. There's, there's always a little bit of comfort though when you're like, what is that? Oh, it's just mascara. All over <laughs> the pillows. I mean, yeah, I at least knew so they were I at hands. Least know that it was something that w- didn't yeah. come out of someone. It was just off of someone. Oh my god! <laughs> it's just off. It's a terrible <laughs> sentence. <laughs> yeah, it's a terrible place. Look at the bright side. Look at the amenities they offer. They offer there is a, there's a grill. Such fine. Amenities. I mean, they do have a four wheeler parked over there too, so yeah, it's kind of rich. But the grill looks like it's barbed wired to the to the uh, light bulb. <laughs> barbed wire. Well, I mean, when awesome. you have a grill that nice, Touch you got to protect it. That's true. Oh, see a, blue, a vintage blue top uh, Weber. Ooh, classic. It's about 8.30. Um, we were traveling yesterday for pretty much 18 hours from 6.30 until uh, close to midnight. Uh, just between driving and stops and food and gas and all that, it was it was a long day. Um, but we were able to sleep in until about 8. It's about 8.30 now. We we're about 30 minutes away from where the festival is and it's show day. So today should be pretty relaxed. We're going to get there kind of get settled in and play. We play today at 2.30, and then a little while after we play, we're gonna get back on the road and head back home. It's a long ways to go for one show, but that's just how it goes sometimes, especially right now. It's just not many people are booking tours. They're just kind of playing where you can and, and doing what's there. There's just not as much going on right now with everything still kind of opening up, so. But, should be a good day. Sit here to you. Yeah, just stay right here. This is a, a great spot. Okay, thank you. That's a great day spot. Let us know where we can put a rig. Yeah. yeah. Can you have dirt move there? Yeah, truck? I don't want to see it. He said, just make ourselves comfortable and hang out and then okay. he'll uh, so it's like uh, holler at me. Coffee and Zelda. Yeah. So, <laughs> hang until around noon. That's cool. what it looks like. Cool. So, hurry up and wait, like it always is. We are a couple hours from showtime. We kind of got our stuff roughed in on stage, and we're going to have about 45 minutes for changeover to set up and get ready to go. At that point in time, we'll kind of get monitor mixes and and everything dialed in to our liking. It'll all be pretty, pretty quick, but honestly, that's a lot more time than you usually get. So, um, we're really thankful for that. But... Other than that, it's a beautiful day here in Cadeau, I believe is how you say it, Wisconsin. And uh, yeah, just looking forward to playing some music. We've been in the van a lot, and so this will be a nice treat (laughs) to finally get to play. So one aspect of filling in for somebody or filling in with a band is that they already have their systems kind of down. There's already, you know, kind of this 
vibe going on with the band. And so as a fill-in guy, I have to kind of just fall into that and figure it out. I don't want to be a nuisance. I don't want to ask too many questions. Um, you know, just constantly trying to figure out what's going on. But I also want to know um, how I can best fill in my spot and help everybody out, help the band out. Um, that goes with what parts I'm playing or musically what I'm doing, but also just the hang, you know, setting stuff up, loading the trailer, all of that. It's kind of this constant um, just feeling out what's best and how I can be most helpful. So that's something I always try to think about when I'm filling in is just, um, you know, how can I help and serve in this role the best that I can without being a nuisance or, um, you know, personality wise, I always, always want to do my best to kind of fit in and and gauge uh, the vibe of the band and of the hang and all of that. Um, and, you know, this time around, it's been great. Noah and all the guys are super nice and um, it's been super easy to fall in with them. So uh, I'm really enjoying all that. I'm about to go get changed and then, um, yeah, hopefully soon we can start kind of getting everything for real set up and play some tunes. Country Fest. Bye. No, what Bye. just happened out there? Uh, we played a show, um, and it was good. Uh, some things could have been done better. That's fine. That's the way it goes. Uh, mostly my things could have been done better. Uh, you did great. Everyone did great. Uh, actually, more people than I thought uh, were actually listening. That was, I mean, probably a few hundred people. Yeah. Um, kind of spread out over the stands there but it was nice um, and it's always fun when you go to a festival that's like I 
and really about well organized and like knows what they're doing and like can give you a a clear rundown of what to expect because that doesn't always happen. Uh, totally. Festival gigs. So I had a good time. Um, you know, I guess for me it's Is like vapor, uh, shook all the dust off. <laughs> it looks like a and just gonna get it. Gonna you know, tighten your SD card in there and tighten it up like, from here. But yeah. I think it was a good. I think it was a good show. Nice. So we are just outside of Asheville, North Carolina, and we made a pit stop, and then we were getting back on the road, and we think something's up with the transmission. Not sure if the whole transmission went out. Um, we can get it every now and then, we can get into the first and second gear, but it's just not uh, consistent, and it keeps going out. So we're kind of stuck on the side of the road here, and um, I think that Noah is figuring out somebody to come. Uh, to grab us in a truck so we can hitch the trailer up to it. We're about an hour from uh, his house, which is where um, Phil's car is parked. So we're almost home and we're stuck on the side of the road. We've been driving all day and we drove about six hours last night, five or six hours last night and driving all day. We're an hour from home and we break down. Well, our van broke down. And I didn't think I was going to smoke my uh, tobacco pipe on this trip, but lo and behold, I had the perfect opportunity. View the blue roof mountains. Have the sunset. This is perfect. So might as well. I mean, so, I don't know if I would say this is like the perfect. I mean, it is an on-ramp, but yeah. it's not a bad view for an on-ramp. Yeah, no, I mean, you know, it's, it's pleasant. Big old truck just pulled up. Is that Brad? It's good timing if it is. Sure looks like it. Hey, I think Brad. Is that our ride? Looks like it. I got back here to my house in Decatur, Georgia about 2 a.m. that night. Really not that bad considering how far we drove and the issues that we had with the van. Um, in the end, I had a great time playing with Noah and the guys. It's always a pleasure to play great music with great people. So thanks to Noah, thanks to Rhett for having me sub. Um, I'm just excited to be playing live music again. When I started this channel about a year and a half ago, I wanted to do more videos like this, more vlog style videos, more videos kind of documenting being a working musician and getting out and playing and what that all entails. Um, but shortly after I started this channel, uh, we were all quarantined and I've been stuck in this tiny room making videos. So, um, you know, hopefully in the future you will see more videos like this. If you've made it this far into this one, thank you for watching. I know it's definitely a longer one than normal, but hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, hopefully you learned some things or just, uh, you know, liked seeing the journey of going on this gig and, and, and you know, doing a sub gig like this. If you haven't already, definitely hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button on this video as well. And until next time, I'll see you out there.